I'm Steve DeGrazio, product follow-up engineer for powertrain at Volvo Cars North America. Today we're going to bring you through uh, the Drive-E powertrains that are coming in through Model Year 15. Why we have them here, uh, you know, and a little bit more about the engines and the transmission. So Drive-E powertrains are here basically because of EPA regulations and CAFE regulations for miles per gallon and carbon dioxide per mile. The Drive-E powertrain will come with different drive modes. When you first start off driving with a fresh ignition cycle, you're in what we would call D1. D1 has a pedal mapping still based on driving pleasure, but other aspects will help keep it more fuel efficient and emissions friendly. Once you get into drive mode, once you go above a certain throttle pedal percentage, it automatically and seamlessly switches to D2 mode. And that's shift mapping and pedal mapping based on driving pleasure. As we have in earlier model years, uh, we still retain sport mode and also paddle shifting. Sport mode will just be the more aggressive shift mapping and pedal mapping. The driver has the option of going into eco mode, and that's done by selecting a button on the dash. Eco mode is set up for the best possible fuel efficiency and lowest emissions. The Drive V powertrain also offers start stop functionality. Start stop basically means when you come to a stop in your vehicle, the engine will also come to a stop to save fuel and lower emissions. We have two different start-stop modes. We have city zero, which means the engine will stop when the car comes to a complete stop, and we have city seven, which means the engine will turn off when the vehicle's at four miles per hour. That's only in eco mode. In sport mode, start-stop is turned off, and also the customer has the option of turning start-stop mode off and on with a button on the dash. However, when you first start your car up, it's going to be on by default. Let's talk about the size of the engine. The purpose here is to downsize. So if we downsize the engine, where are we gonna get that power from? We have the options of increasing pressure or increasing engine speeds. High engine speeds are just gonna cause increased friction, increased fuel, fuel consumption. To increase cylinder pressions, we have variable valve timing, high compression, and turbocharging, which is nothing new to Volvo, but also supercharging, which is new for this powertrain. So some gas engine technologies that we're implementing into the VEP engines. We have dual variable valve timing, which we've had before, which will optimize emissions and improve efficiency. Friction reduction improves overall engine efficiency, and the gain from that is fuel economy and also performance. Thermal management is also new to this engine. The pump is only used when the engine needs that cooling capacity. Advanced combustion, with the help of direct injection, aids in fuel economy, performance, and lowered emissions. For the high power engine, we're implementing advanced boosting. We're going to include a supercharger and a turbocharger, and this will help fuel economy performance and drivability. For the medium power engine, we will retain the turbocharger technology that we use now. So with these petrol engine technologies, we get big block power and performance, better fuel economy and efficiency with less emissions. With this powertrain also comes a new eight-speed automatic gearbox. The main improvements in this gearbox have to do with fuel efficiency. Let's take a look at power density to compare a few of our engines and manufacturers' engines. Power density is basically how much horsepower the engine is putting out versus the volume of the engine. So if we look at the high power Drive-E or VEP engine, which is putting out 302 horsepower and it's two liters, that's 151 horsepower per liter. If we compare it to the medium power engine, which is putting out 240 horsepower in two liters, that's 120 horsepower per liter. So compare that to engines that we use currently. We have SI6 Turbo, this three liter turbocharged engine uh, with Polestar, that's 325 horsepower uh, in a three liter engine. So that comes out to about 108 horsepower per liter. Our three liter SI6 Turbo without Polestar was 300 horsepower out of a three liter, so 100 horsepower per liter. Comparing it to our five cylinder, that was also pushing out 100 horsepower per liter. Two other engines to compare it to, the non-turbo SI6, uh, 75 horsepower per liter, and also the V8 that we use in the XC90 and the S80 was pushing out 71 horsepower per liter. And now Joe, our product manager, will talk about our mission and how we plan to do this. Thanks, Steve. So this is a huge industrial project that Volvo's going through. There's been an $11 billion investment made in Volvo. 300 million of it went to the Swedish engine plant. This is the only plant where these uh, Drive-E engines will be produced globally. The overall message of Drive-E is it's, it's part of the umbrella of, uh, 
of Volvo's environmental message. So the, the customer benefits are to reduce cost of ownership, provides intelligent solutions for a better efficiency, and overall provides a no compromise driving experience. Now we've stopped talking about the number of cylinders when we talk about power. For us, power now means the amount of air we can flow through it. So we can have a smaller engine and make it both powerful and efficient. The badging strategy of the cars will be uh, T5 and T6. T5 will be referencing a uh, engine produces between 200 to 250 horsepower, and then a T6 will be producing between 250 to around 300 horsepower. T5 uh, drive -E engine will be the, uh, in the front wheel drive powertrain for the S60, V60, XC60, XC70, and S80. The T6 drive -E will be an, will be featured in the S60 and the XC60s. All wheel drive powertrains will be carried over from the existing Model Year 14. So we'll be carrying the uh, T5 all wheel drive in the S60 and the V60, and then 3.2 all wheel drive will be in the XC60 and XC70. For the top level all wheel drive, we will retain the existing T6 all wheel drive drivetrain. Now the big news with the, uh, with the drive V engine is we are, we are leapfrogging in um, both performance and economy. Uh, the S60 T5 Model Year 14 had a uh, combined miles per gallon of 24 miles per gallon. We're jumping that to 30, and as you can see, we're going to be best in class with the combined fuel economy. Another nice benefit is we are also jumping up in 0 to 60 time, uh, where 0 to 60 is improving by 4 tenths of a second down to 6.0 seconds. Big news on the XC60 is that we are going from a combined EPA rating of 21 miles per gallon, uh, which was arguably mid-pack, to now we are leaping to the top of the class with a combined rating of 27 miles per gallon. And the acceleration is improving from 9.1 seconds for the uh, XC60 3.2 down to 6.9 seconds for the T5 and 6.5 seconds for the T6. So really what this all comes down to is that we're providing a no compromise driving experience for the customer. The customer's benefits are going to be that they get better power, better efficiency, lower cost of ownership, and overall a much more pleasant driving experience.